the counterfeit combine, which printed more than half a million dollars in bogus bills, until an alert farmer and a hot turkey helped hard-working Secret Service agents close the case. Gangbusters presents as narrator by proxy of tonight's case, the Honorable U.E. Bauman, Chief of the United States Secret Service Treasury Department. Thank you. And good evening, Gangbusters listeners. Our case tonight begins last spring in the city of Chicago. It was early in the evening in an apartment house near Douglas Park when a slightly built man, carrying what was obviously a box of flowers, bounded up two steps at a time toward the door of a second-floor apartment. Pearl? Pearl, I... Hello, Andy. Gus. Hiya. Well, where you been, Andy? Two hours I've been sitting there cooling my heels waiting for you. Hey, Pearl here? Well, who do you think let me in? She's fine company. Where are you taking her tonight? Her hair, her nails, her works. When are you celebrating? Pearl! What do you got there, flowers? I thought only college boys brought flowers. Hey, Andy, relax. I'm here. I'm just getting ready for the big night out. Yeah, okay, Pearl. I got some flowers for you. That's nice. <laughs> you see, you got all the trouble to bring violets. They're orchids. Okay, orchids. What's it get you? That's nice. Bang. Well, she's getting dressed. Now, listen, Andy. We've been associating business a long time. That pearl don't care no more for you than, than that. She's out after what she can get. Guts, I don't want no discussion of this again. As soon as something better comes along with more dose, who will drop you head first. She's a social client. I don't want to hear nothing else about it. Okay, you bought your shoes, walk in him. Anyway, I came here for a conference. About what? Here. Get rid of these. Oh, listen, Gus, I still ain't unloaded half of the last. Well, that's a trouble. The boss says you ain't producing. Who ain't producing? I'm out breaking my back every day. Listen, you got the best go of all the guys. There ain't one of the boys wouldn't grab your territory in a minute, Andy. You got the best counterfeit since, since Lusty. The counterfeit may be okay, Gus, but you know how far I got to ride between farmhouses? Uh, how many turkeys can I buy? And how many farmers got change in the house for a 20 or a 10? Listen, Andy, them's your problems. The boss says produce or you lose your franchise. I want to talk to the boss. Now, don't you know better than that, Andy? I want to get this thing straightened out. Look, 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 look. You've got a good deal. Yeah, yeah. If you get nailed, you don't know the boss or they can't touch him. If he gets nailed, vice versa. So you're better off. Well, tell him I'm getting tired of working the farmers. Tell him I want to work bars or someplace. Listen, we got plenty of guys working the bars. We got too many. Ah, you got a good thing, Andy. I'll just produce. Well, you and Pearl have a good time tonight. Yeah. But tomorrow, get to work. Get to work. Pearl? Well? Oh, what? Did you tell him you want to meet the boss? Yeah, I told him. How do you like the hair this way? Chick, huh? Yeah. What did he say? Look around my neck there, see if I missed any hairs putting it up. No, no, you didn't miss none, honey. Well, what did he say? Oh, the same old story. I'll be better off if I don't meet the boss. How do you expect to get ahead in this world if you don't know who you're working for? Tell you the truth, Pearl, I don't care. Well, I do. Why? Because I want to see you get ahead. I'll never get ahead dealing through Gus. you got to go to somebody higher up, get a better deal. Gus can't give it to you. Listen, that counterfeit costs you 15 cents on the dollar. Right or wrong? Well, that's good stuff, honey. Best i ever seen. And you got to go out and buy chickens and eggs and turkeys with it to get change in the hard stuff. Right or wrong? Well, that's my territory, baby. The farmers. Okay. You take $10 in counterfeit. Of course, you're a buck and a half. You invest a couple of bucks more in eggs or something you got to throw away, plus gas and oil. How much do you make out of the deal? Well, it ain't so terrible, Pearl. We live so bad. And supposing some guy you buy a turkey from, instead of a farmer, he's a Secret Service agent. Then you really bought yourself a turkey. Well, in this business, you got to take risks. That's the nature of it. Button me up the back, will you? Yeah, baby, sure. Oh, they ought to make these things with zippers. Now, next time you see Gus, you put it on the line about where you stand. If you don't tell him, I will. Okay, okay, well, I'll tell him. Didn't you say you bought me some flowers? Oh, yeah, 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 I'll get them. No, no, never mind yet. Just finish the buttoning. Okay. Now, I want you to act like a gentleman when we get to the Tally Ho Club, because that's a Who very... Who said we're going to the Tally Ho? I did. Well, they soak you an arm and a leg there. That's where I want to go, to the Tally Ho. Chief, 
Secret Service, Treasury, Washington. From Supervising Agent, Chicago District. Count of a $10 and $20 Federal Reserve notes in circulation, Chicago area, increasing daily. Count of it appearing so many different places, unquestionably work of dozens of passes, and indicating well-organized operation. Investigation so far, fruitless. Suggest temporary assignment, this district, as many agents as can be spared. Signed, Neeson. Hello, boss. Well, Gus, you're up early this morning. Yeah, yeah, I got a big day ahead of me. What's the matter? You got troubles? Uh, no, not exactly troubles, but a few of them shovers ain't moving the queer as fast as they could. That's your job, Gus, to make them move it fast. But sooner or later, they're going to grab one of these shovers. I don't see how they could miss. And when they do, that's when you and I will have to pull up stakes. Anything you say, boss... Well, I'll see you later. Now, just a minute. Uh, what? This uh, chap um, that you have uh, working the farmers, this uh, Andy, uh, what's his name? A oh, Trojek, Andy Trojek. Yes, find out if he was at the Tally Ho Club last night. Well, I don't know whether he went there, but he was going out someplace. Why? Does he have a girl? Blonde? Yeah, Pearl. Hey, how'd you recognize Andy? You never met him. You pointed him out to me once. Oh, yeah. yeah. That blonde is uh, quite a dish. <laughs> she ain't bad. Andy works the farmers, huh? Yeah. All right, you tell Andy the Secret Service is getting pretty close to him around where he's working. Are they? Tell him he ought to take a trip. Southern Indiana. He should do all right down there. He can take all the time he wants. A couple of weeks. Hey, what is it? Just tell him to take the trip. Work down there. And then, um, about Pearl. Bring her around to meet me. I think she'd be nice company. Trips I gotta take. Trips! So for how long is it? It's for long enough, Guts. Oh. What's Pearl gonna do without me? She don't like it none, you know. Pearl? Well, she'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, well I'll be all right. Pearl! Now, listen, Andy, the boss says... I'm getting you... good and sick of what the boss says. <sighs> ready to leave, baby. Yeah, yeah, he's ready. Well, don't forget to change your socks. That's all you got to say to me? Don't forget to change your socks? Watch out for the cops. Oh, baby, come oh, here. Oh, Andy. In front of Pete. I'm not people. Now, go on, grab your bag, Andy. Come on, get going. Yeah. Well, I'll write to you, baby. Yeah, write to me. Well, Gus, you sure shipped him off in a hurry, didn't you? Well, you know how it is, Pearl. Things are getting hard around here. We've got to make the best of good things. Yeah? The boss told you? Sure, he told me. Well, you got rid of Andy. What's on your mind? As if I didn't have any idea. Well, there's nothing on my mind, Pearl. Look, Gus, let's get something straight. Don't make a play for me. I don't go for your type. Who's going to make a play for you? I was just going to ask you out to have dinner out, that's all. That ain't a play? Well, now, listen, I got my own girl. Just thought maybe you'd, uh, well, you'd like to make meet a friend of mine. Who's your friend? The boss? Yeah, just a friend. You want to go or don't you? No. Well, what are you going to do sitting around here? Is he good looking? Well, he ain't bad looking. He's got dough. He's got plenty. Okay, Gus. You're right. What am I going to do sitting around here? I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. Well, gangbusters listeners, you can see that complications were developing within this smooth gang of counterfeiters. And agents of the United States Secret Service are the first to take advantage of such complications. And now, back to Gangbusters. And here again, by proxy, is tonight's narrator, the Honorable U.E. Bauman, Chief of the United States Secret Service. As I was telling you, agents of the United States Secret Service, Treasury Department, were troubled by a gang of well-organized counterfeiters in the Chicago area. 
In the Chicago office of the Secret Service, supervising agent Jack Easton and agent Al Manners were talking over their problems. And if that's not enough, Al, Washington says he'll send me every agent that can be spared from every district in the country. Well, these extra men ought to help some, Mr. Easton, but that counterfeit's just a little too good. Just a little too good. Uh, we'll get them, Al. Yeah, I know we'll get them, Mr. Easton, but in the meantime, there's a lot of merchants who are getting nicked. Yes, and farmers. Don't forget the farmers. How can I forget the farmers? You know, when those extra men get in here, I think we'll start concentrating on the farmer angle. That's a lot of territory to cover. I know, but I come from a farm family myself. If there's one thing a farmer does, that's read his mail. Now, we've got to get ourselves up a nice bulletin to send out. We've got to tell the farmers to watch out for strangers using tens and twenties to buy chickens, eggs, turkeys, and so forth. We've got to tell them how to detect this counterfeit and what to do when they see it. Yeah, maybe that's the angle. And we'll have men stationed all over Illinois and Indiana. They can follow up any leads the farmers give us, and fast. What do you think, Al? It's as good as anything. Okay. Start plans to get this warning notice rolling. And map out the locations where you're going to station the men. Drag me into, Cuz. Uh, you'll have a good time, Pearl, believe me. Supposed to go out to dinner with a high class friend of yours and where we wind up. Join with a jukebox. Oh, there he is. Come on. Him? Yeah. Excuse him. Hey. Me, please. Looks nice. Dignified, kind of. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> well, I'm sorry we're a little late, Ralph. We uh, got caught in traffic. That's all right. Pearl? Ralph. Ralph Pearl. Pleased to meet you. Good. Why don't we sit down? Thank you. Gus, well, I think I'd better go get my girl, Ralph. Uh, you don't mind, huh? I don't mind. Neither do I. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, meet you later. Now, what'll you have to drink, girl? Whiskey? Soda on the side, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Waiter. Whiskey, soda on the side. Right. Well, well, if that's settled, would you like to straighten me out on something, Ralph? Of course, anything. Just how did all this come about, you and me and everything? Well, it's really very simple. Gus is a good friend of mine. He's been describing a certain gorgeous blonde to me, and uh, I said I'd like to meet him. So, here we are. Not sorry. No, not me. I'm the last person in the world to get sorry. By the way, what line of work are you in? I always like to know what my gentleman friends do. You're not really interested, are you? Okay, if you're ashamed of it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm, um, a bookie. A bookie? I take bets on racehorses. I know what a bookie does. Where's that waiter with my drink? He'll be here. I'm sorry to bring you to this place, but uh, it was most convenient for Gus. We'll have dinner downtown someplace. Gus didn't go to get his girl, did he? He said that's where he was going. He won't meet us later, will he? You mind? Mind? Tickle to death? You want to know something? I think we're going to get along fine. I'll go you one better. I think we're going to get along great. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> We just got another wire, Mr. Easton. Oh? Some more of the counterfeit showed up down in Sullivan County, southern Indiana. Who have you got working there, Al? Miller. Uh-huh. That looks like somebody is trying to make the best of a good thing down there. Look, why don't you take a run down to Sullivan and work along with Miller? Okay. And you better get going right away, before the shover moves on. I've got my car right over in the lot. I'll be on my way in 15 minutes. Let her ring, baby. Oh, I really ought to answer that. Why? I wonder all night who it was. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, is that all you got to say to me? How are you? Where you been for three nights? I'm burning up the wires trying to get you. Andy, where are you? In Sullivan, Indiana, honey. I've been working the countryside around here. Oh, I'm making a mint. You miss me, sweetheart? Of course. I'll be home Sunday. Well, if you're doing so well, Andy, why don't you stay out? Well, I want to see you, baby. I want to talk to you. I'll call you again tomorrow night. You'll be here Sunday. Yeah, 
now, but I... Look, Andy, I haven't eaten any dinner. I got my hat and coat on. I just got to go out and eat. I'm starved. Pearl, what are you giving me? What kind of brush is this? Call me tomorrow, huh? Bye, Andy. Huh? <laughs> Don't look so disgusted. Now you see what I got to put up with. You can handle him, can't you? I don't know, Ralph. I may need a little help. What do you mean? I mean, now's the time for us to put our cards on the table. Okay? All right. I presume you are interested in me, more or less. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about that. You want me to do something about Andy? Well, you are his boss, aren't you? Well, you won't have any trouble with Andy. First, you'll move uh, where he can't find you. And second, if he becomes too insistent, Gus will have a little talk with him. Seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, twenty. Here's change, mister. Thanks. Uh, how do you keep one of these turkeys quiet? Well, you bought him from me. That's your problem now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll manage. Hey, it's a funny thing, mister. Just the other day, I got notice from the United States Secret Service in the mail. Hey, hey wait a minute. Oh. Where? Hazel! Hazel! Where's that circular from the Secret Service? Hazel! <laughs> Sweetheart, I didn't sleep all night. You were kind of short with me on the phone. What's the matter? Weren't you feeling good? You lonely? I'm all right. Look, where are you? You still in Indiana? Yeah, Sullivan in a booth in a drugstore. Listen, honey, I don't like this traveling at all. You don't, huh? No, when I get back Sunday, I'm going to tell Gus to give it to the boss straight. Well, let me tell you something. I've been asking you for months to find out who the boss is. I know him. You do? You bet I do, and we're the best of friends. Well, the very best of friends. And you might as well stay in Sullivan, because if you come in Sunday, you'll find me gone. I'm packing right now. Goodbye. Pearl. Pearl. The boss. The best of friends. All right, mister. Hey. Secret Service. What do you want with me? Just a few words and a little of your time. Is that your car parked outside the Chevy? I don't have a car. We'll see about that. That car was used by a man answering your description to shove a few counterfeit bills and farmers. One of them got your license number. See what you're carrying. Stay out of my pockets. You've got no right. Okay, you nailed me. Sure. A stack of counterfeit 20s in your pocket, and then you make an admission. Now go on. Walk out of here. You're going back to Chicago. And I don't too much like the idea of trusting that Andy, even if he is sore about the girl. Now, if he made a break, he wouldn't get very far. We've got every door covered. Well, that's not what I mean. I mean, what's he telling Gus over there? What we told him to? Or is he telling him this place is loaded with Secret Service agents? Well, that's a chance we have to take, Al. We've got nothing on anybody except Andy. He says this Gus is the contact man. And Gus can lead us to the boss. I don't like doing business this way. Well, I don't think Andy will pull any fast one. He's too burned up about the boss stepping in and taking over his girl. Well, maybe... Uh-oh. Gus is getting up. Yeah. There he goes out the door. Okay, Al. Get behind Gus and stay there. Yeah. I'll phone you later. Keep your fingers crossed. On both hands, Al. On both hands. Okay, Mr. Easton. I've done your job for you. Sit down, Andy. Thanks. Did you tell Gus you wanted some more count of it? Yeah, I told him. What did he say? He said he'd get it for me. What about Pearl? Did you ask Gus if he knew where she was? Yeah. He said he had no idea. Look, Mr. Easton, when you get him, don't let me near her or this boss, whoever he is. I'll tear him apart. You don't have to worry about that. We'll keep you plenty separated. Okay, let's get going. I think it's safe enough now. Supervising Agent Eason. This is Al. Were you able to stay behind, Gus? 
You bet. All the way. He went to an apartment house on Ithaca, 6722, and he went upstairs to the third floor to an apartment occupied by one Ralph Walters. And he's still up there. Ralph Walters? Yeah. I checked on him with the janitor. Walters owns an offset print shop downtown. Print shop, huh? That could be our man. Could be. I'd swear to it. All right, Al. I'll round up the boys and we'll be right over. I want to have a talk with this Mr. Ralph Walters. And now back to Gangbusters. And then Andy tells me, boss, he tells me, Gus, if you run into Pearl any place, tell her I got to see her. <laughs> Fine <laughs> chance he's got. Well, Pearl, you want to go back to Andy? Is that a joke? Hey, how about another drink? What's the matter? You got prohibition back around here or something? I'll fix it. All right, baby. How about you, honey, the same? Uh, yes, the same. Okay. Great girl, Gus. Yeah. Now just watch out, boss. She don't do the same thing to you she did to Andy. I'm not worried. Well, there are guys around with more money than you got, you know. Gus, you're a pretty smart boy. Yeah? You've been sticking your neck out long enough. You work on the inside from now on. We'll get somebody else to contract the shovers. Well, a promotion. Thanks, boss. We've got the best set of plates ever. We can go on for years. Never get touched. We can... Pearl. Maybe she got her head caught in the icebox. Pearl. Okay, I'll be in there. <laughs> Guess she didn't. Well, hurry up, Pearl. We... Uh-oh. That's it, boys. Be smart. Don't make a move. He knocked on the kitchen door. They said it was the janitor. We're Secret Service agents. Now, listen here. Be quiet for a while. We want to do a little talking first. When we get finished, you can gab all you want. We'll be all ears. Well, gangbusters listeners, before that night was over, agents of the Secret Service had recovered hundreds of thousands of dollars in bogus money and the plates from which it was printed. The names of a dozen or so passers of counterfeit were also known to them. And the general roundup began. Members of this gang are now serving terms ranging from four to 14 years in various federal penitentiaries. Well, thank you, Chief U.E. Bauman, for this insight into the work of the United States Secret Service Treasury Department. Now, you've told me that there are still thousands of bogus $10 and $20 bills in circulation. So, in place of our regular clue tonight, here is a detailed description of these bills. Anyone who handles money should take a pad and pencil and write down this information. Attention all citizens, retail merchants, and cashiers in particular. To save yourself money, be on the alert for counterfeit $10 and $20 bills on the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. Letter G. G as in George in a seal on the face of the bill, left side. If you have such a $10 bill, check the portrait of Alexander Hamilton. On the counterfeit, the hairline has an unnaturally white appearance. If you have a $20 bill with letter G in the seal, look for one of these numbers on the face of the bill in the lower right-hand corner. G110. H110. I110. J-110, K-108, or L-108. For further details, consult your bank or the nearest office of the United States Secret Service. Warning. When you accept counterfeit money, you are the loser. These counterfeit $10 and $20 notes on the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago are very deceptive and are expertly reproduced. The silk threads found in the paper of genuine bills are simulated by red ink marks or cannot be found at all. If in doubt, carefully compare a suspected note with a genuine one or telephone police or the U.S. Secret Service. If you are given one of these counterfeit $10 or $20 notes, attempt to delay the party and notify your local police or the nearest office of the United States Secret Service at once. Tonight's case was dramatized by Stanley Nitz and directed by William Sweets, with Mandel Kramer and Elspeth Eric in leading roles. Jay Jackson speaking.
Gangbusters is a Phillips H. Lord production.